the Lord. And listen, I don't know about you, but that's what I've come to do. I've come to sing, I've come to shout, I've come to give God glory. And I just invite you on this morning to help me lift up uh, the great name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're separated geographically, but we are united spiritually. And so let's come together and lift up the name of our God together in spirit and in truth. Just before we do so, I want to lift up a word of prayer uh, and, and pray for you all, and I pray that you are praying for me. Whatever that need is on your heart right now, I just ask that you would just begin to uh, lift it up in prayer to our God, uh, and we will go to God's throne uh, where we can find help in times of trouble. Father God, we thank you once again, not only for the privilege of prayer, but we thank you, oh God, for the power in prayer. Lord, we come now, before we go any further, asking you for your forgiveness. We ask you, O oh God, that you would have mercy upon us, O oh God, for we realize today that we've not dotted every I, we have not crossed every T. As a matter of fact, O oh God, we've missed the mark altogether. And Lord, we ask that your blood that was shed on Calvary's cross over 2,000 years ago would cleanse us even now. Lord, we know that your blood still works, and we're so thankful and grateful, O oh God, that you have saved us, that you are saving us, and that ultimately one day you will save us. Oh, I want to see you and look upon your face. On the streets of glory, I will lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, forever we will rejoice. Lord God, right now before uh, we enter into worship, oh God, we ask that you would help us to get our mind right. That you would give us an attitude adjustment, oh God, a, a heart replacement if needed, oh God. Lord, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Right there in our homes, oh God, and in our cars and on our jobs or wherever we may be. We just want to pause, oh God, just to say thank you for all that you have done to, for us. Lord God, we see chaos and calamity all around us, oh God, but somehow, Lord, there's peace in our homes, there's peace in our mind, the love of God, uh, oh God, is just going from breast to breast in our household. There's no other way to explain it, but that you have favored us. Thank you for your love, thank you for your favor, thank you for your grace. Now, Lord God, we ask that you would accept our, our pitiful worship, oh God. For we realize that you have angels that cry, holy, 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 all day and all night in heaven, oh God. And we, we lift up our frail and fragile voices today to give you praise, oh God. And we pray that it will be a sweet savor in your nostrils. I pray for your children now, uh, wherever they may be, oh God, that you would bless them, oh God, that you would see to it that there be no lack in their households, oh God, that you would keep them uh, healthy and strong, oh God. Uh, Lord God, that you would remind them, oh God, of, of common sense uh, health practices, oh God, washing of the hands and, and social distancing, all of that, oh God. Uh, we ask, oh God, that you would just guide us, oh God, through this storm. Guide us, oh God, uh, through this, this dark time, oh God. We trust you, O oh God. We place our hands in the Master's hands. And we know that if we place our hands in your hands, everything is going to be all right. We rejoice in you now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
God for the shift. We're going to another level. I am assured that God has everything under control. I put it all in his hand. I need you to welcome the full gospel Baptist Church Fellowship Super Mass Choir singing all in his hand. This and that is in his
Isn't that good news, St. Emmanuel? That we can put it all in his hands. Whatever it is, this or that, he can handle it. The choir said that that's a fact. We can put it all in his hands. But I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a word from the Lord. Uh, before we do it, I would that you would take your copy of God's word, whatever it is, and hold it high up in the air and make this declaration with me. Say, this is my Bible. It's God's holy word. It's a lamp unto my feet, and it's a light unto my path. I believe what it says. I can have what it says if I do what it says, because God's word is true. Would you pray with me? Father God in heaven, we say thank you once again for this blessed privilege, O oh God, to stand, stand in this sacred space, in this sacred place, O oh God. To open up your word, O oh God, and become your mouthpiece to preach what thus saith the Lord. Lord God, we realize today that what you've called me to do is an impossible task, being a mere mortal. But, O oh God, I know that with you all things are possible. So right now, in this moment, I invite you to stand in my body asking that you would think with my mind and that you would then speak with my mouth. I pray now as the song is prayed that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Our assignment today be coming from another familiar psalm, Psalm 34. I want to lift up one verse in your hearing, Psalm 34 and verse 1. David says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I, I want to talk to us for the next few moments that I was to share together from this, from this thought. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. In the hearts, I wanted to lift this psalm this morning because this psalm is a psalm of reflection. This psalm is a psalm of thanksgiving. In spite of all that we see going on around us, I still believe that all of us still have something to be thankful to God for. All of us still have some reasons to rejoice in the Lord and give thanks unto our great God for his goodness in our lives. I know that if we could be together today and I would pass the microphone around. I'm sure that many of you would have to be honest and admit, I, I don't look like everything I've been through because God has been good to me. E even in your quiet time while you're sheltering in place, some of you have been reflecting on your own lives and, and you can testify that yes, my life has been filled with bumps and bruises, but, but, but you don't look like what you've been through. And as a matter of fact, I don't even look like what I'm going through right now. Glory to God. Because if we're honest, not, not all of our troubles are behind us. For some, for some of us, many of our problems are right there in our faces. Some of us are dealing with some burdens and some of us are dealing with difficulties and some frustrations and, and, and you need to know, is there a word from the Lord for my situation, my station in life? But even in the midst of all of that, you still found a reason to say thank you because you know like I know. God has been good to you. 
And I'm of the opinion that you don't have to wait until you get down or get up to the church house. That you don't have to wait until there's an organ playing and the drums are thumping in order for you to say thank you because, because all of us should be living in a perpetual state of gratitude. No, that's not to say that everything in our lives are peachy keen. But what I am saying is that you've already been through enough with God to know that God is faithful and consistent. That no matter what you're going through right now, the same God who brought you through before is able and willing to bring you through again. That when the joy of the Lord is your strength, it buffers you even in the midst of difficult and dismal days that, that we have to go through every now and then. And don't let anybody fool you into believing that just because you are a Christ follower, don't, don't, don't let anybody fool you to, into believing that, that just because you pray and you read your Bible that you are immune from difficulty and frustrations and Psalm 34 teaches us this because Psalm 34 is David's reflection of the reality that he's been through some difficult days but the Lord brought him through. This, this is David. The same David that you and I honor today as, as a man after God's own heart. This is David, the man of God who was brought from obscurity all the way into prominence, even to the king of Israel. He, he is somebody in the biblical record. But, but this man, David, did not get to where he was without some bumps and without some bruises. He, he did not. He, he did not get to the place where, where we celebrate him and we, we laud him with, without some trials and some tribulations in his life. So dear hearts, when he gives to us this psalm, Psalm 34, he, he gives us the recounting, the, the, the recounting of some frustrating realities and difficult days. But his testimony is, God brought me through it. And if God could bring him through all that he has brought him through, David says he'll do the same thing for you and me. David says, don't, 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 get, it, don't get it twisted. God didn't do it for me because of who I am. He did it because of who he is. That's just the kind of God we serve. He, he's a faithful God. He is a consistent God. When everything all around us is uncertain, when everything around us is shifting sand, he is a sure thing. David says in verse 11 that if we would fear the Lord, at the same time that he did for me, he'll turn around and he'll do it for you. David, David makes it clear that, that he has reason to rejoice, but he's, he's not just rejoicing. He, he wants everybody else to know uh, the God of whom he's rejoicing about. He says, I, I want you to trust him too. I want you to trust them like I trust them. Listen, I want you to love him the way that I love him. I want you to serve him the way that I serve him. And so David begins to tell us his story. And you know, can't nobody tell your story like you can tell your story. So David tells us, he tells us his story. Psalm, Psalm 34 is the, the recapitulation of David's story. He, he can't tell it all in 22 verses, but he sums it all up and he tells us that he's been through some dangers, grandmother said, seen 
and unseen. But God, God has blessed him through it all. And so he begins this psalm not by complaining, although he had plenty he could complain about. Not by complaining and bemoaning his circumstances, but by giving us a perpetual determination. It's right there in the text. I'm not making it up. Verse 1 says, he, he says, I will bless the Lord. Did you catch that? I, I will bless the Lord, watch this, at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That, that, that blesses me because David says, I've been through some rough days in my life. I've had some difficult and some frustrating circumstances, but, but here is my one and only determination. He says, here it is, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Y'all, y'all can feel me now right there in your home or in your car because, because some of y'all started thinking about your own life story. You start thinking about some of the circumstances you've been faced with and when you think about how good God has been to you, you can't let David have this as his, his one and only testimony alone. You, you've got the same response as David does. Here it is. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's a perpetual determination. It, it's, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. It's, it's never ending type of determination. He says in good times and in bad times I, I made up in my mind that I am going to bless his name. And, and, and that blessed me today because it is shocking to me that David would make a determination like this saying that he would bless the Lord at all times not knowing what all times was going to bring. You don't know what's going to happen by this time next week. You don't know what the rest of 2020 holds for, for you and me. But David says, David says, I, I'm, I'm not worried about what, what the future holds. David says, what I am saying is based upon my past experience with God, based on what he's already done for me, based on how he's already made ways for me, based on how he's already seen me through. I made up my mind today to bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> David says good times and bad times, happy times and sad times, mountain times and valley times, broken times and wealthy times, lean times and fat continually be in my mouth. And dear hearts, we, we've got to grow up to get to that point. We, we cannot just be immature believers and make that declaration. That, that requires some maturity in the reality of who God is. David, David by this time, he's no novice to the faith. No, no, by, by, by this time, David is a, a veteran of the faith. David has, by now, been through some things. He, he said, I, I've been young, but now I'm old. And he said, based on what I know about God and based on our relationship thus far, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. David says, David says, let, let, let me get specific on how I'm going to bless the Lord. David said, I'm going to be visible. I'm going to be vocal with my praise. Because he says, even the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The, the, the humble who, who are the oppressed, the humble or who are the afflicted, the humble are those who have not risen in stature and prominence like uh, David, but, but, but they can see David praising the Lord like he's praising him and they are hearing him praise and based on their hearing of David praising, they get glad that if God was able to do it for David, <laughs> that 
that he can also do it for us as well. That, that, that God doesn't pick and, and, and choose who, who he'll bestow his favor upon. All of us are, are God's children and all of us as God's children have the favor of God on our lives. And if God is able to do it for one of God's children, then we know that God is able to do it for all of God's children. Listen, I need somebody to testify that we serve a God who knows how to take care of his children. Oh, David says, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Now watch this. Because David gives us not only a perpetual determination, but he bases that perpetual determination on a personal reflection. Did you catch that? That he gives us a, he gives us a perpetual determination, but it is based in uh, a personal reflection. Uh, all the way from verse 4, all the way through verse 11, David begins to reflect on everything that God had done in his life, especially by, by, by saving him and, and sparing his life from his enemy. He, he, he doesn't have time to tell it all, I told you, in these 22 verses, but, but he does remember how when he had some uh, fake friends and real enemies. He, he, he remembers that when they smiled in his face all the while, they were trying to take his place. He remembers that when they tried to, to take him out. And, and this is what he says. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. In other words, their hearts David says, I, I, I've got a track record with the Lord. I, 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 I've been reflecting on, on what God has done. And I want to submit to you today that the, uh, the, the only life that is really worth celebrating is a life that has been reflected upon. Did you hear what I said? That the only life that is worth celebrating is a life that has been reflected upon. But because you cannot appreciate where you are until you remember from whence you came. And so David, he starts reflecting and he says, when, when, when I look back over my life, I, I, I remember the times where I, I thought I wasn't going to make it. I, I, I remember the times when, when, when I was sure the enemy was going to snuff me out and I sought the Lord. I fell down on my knee. I had a little talk with Jesus and I told him all about my troubles and I, I remember that when I called upon him, he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. <laughs> David said this this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. David, David says one, one of the things that I've learned in reflection is, is I serve a God who knows how to answer my prayers. And oh, my brothers and sisters, on a Sunday morning, I know we have some folks that are looking at me right now who can testify today that, uh, that they are the beneficiaries of uh, answered prayer. Who, 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 who can testify that, 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 that your mama and, and, and your daddy and your granny and your pastor praying for you and as a consequence you are alive today in your right mind as a testimony to the manifestation of the Lord answering prayer. That's why I get so happy. That's that, that's why I get so overt with my praise because God has answered my prayers. Not only is God answered prayers, but in verse 7, he says, the angel of the Lord, that's bless me, the angel of the Lord encamps around all those that fear him and delivers them. He says, he says, listen, I, I'm, I, I'm not just a beneficiary of answered prayer, but I know something about angelic protection. 
That, that, that I was in some spaces and I was in some places where my life was literally hanging in the balance, but my God, just in the nick of time, deputized an angel to cover me and encircle me, and the only reason that I'm alive and breathing today is not because I made all the right decisions, not because I've, I've lived so well, not because I've been so careful, not because I've been so and said, you protect my child. I need somebody who can testify. Like the old saints used to testify when they said, all night and all day. It, it was the angels that, that kept watching over me, my Lord. David says, David says, I know he's a keeper. <laughs> he says, I know He's a healer. I, I know that he's a way maker. I know that he'll provide for you. I know that he'll open doors for you. I know that he will promote you. I know he will lift you up. I know he will forgive you. I know he will restore you. I know he'll give you another chance. I know he'll fight your battles. I know he'll make ways out of no way. And I promise you that he will do 
just what he said he's going to do. Is there anybody who can help me celebrate a God who makes ways out of no way? Is there anybody here who can help me celebrate a God who can do what no other power but, but Holy Ghost power can do? And if, and if you know him for yourself, here's the second invitation. David says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If, if you know that he's able, what he's able to do, you need to magnify him. That, that means to make him larger. Larger. That means to make him big. That means to expand his territory. That, that means to get visible with it. Go, go vocal with it. Every time you think about the goodness of God, you ought to magnify him. Every time you think about the ways he's made in your life, you ought to magnify him. Every time he puts your heart back together again, you ought to magnify him. Every time he dries your weeping eyes, you ought to magnify him. Every time he makes your enemy your footstool, you ought to magnify him. Every time he opens up a door in your life, you ought to magnify him. Somebody tell you how wonderful you are. You ought to turn around With everything, let everything the Bible says that has breath, you ought to be praising the Lord. You ought to do a little test right now. Just blow on your hand. If you feel anything on your hand, you are qualified to give God some praise. Let everything the Bible says that has breath, praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, every time I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. But don't just take my word for it. Taste and see for yourself that the Lord is good. And dear hearts, I, I want to offer you that same invitation today. To come, taste, and see. Now you, you can tell that I'm a, I'm a big guy and I like to taste. And I like to see. But I don't, I don't normally like to do it in that order. I like to see and then taste. But let me tell you something about our God. I'm a witness today that if you try him for yourself, you'll discover that he is good. You, 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 you may not get to see it first, but if you just go ahead and Come and give your, your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that's, that's that taste that I'm talking about. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Your hearts, if you make that confession here today, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. I want to welcome you to the best relationship, the best experience that you'll ever experience on this side of heaven and in heaven. You are a child of the Master because you have believed the good report. You believe that Jesus came, born of a virgin, lived among us, was sinless perfection, died on the cross for my sins and yours, was laid in a barroom tomb, and three days later, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. And upon that, God says, I'll save you. So dear hearts, I love you, and I praise God for you, and I hope to see you soon. God bless you. Well, God bless you again. Uh, Saint Emmanuel, I pray that something was said or done uh, today that encouraged you and uplifted you uh, on, this, on this week. Now it's our uh, time to uh, bless God in a tangible way uh, in the giving of our tithes and of our offerings. Uh, there are three ways that we have secured for you to uh, give your tithes and offering uh, in a safe manner. 
Uh, one way, the primary way, uh, at this time will be on our website at sanemanueldenton.org. It should be listed there right below me. Uh, also, if you do, don't want to give online, you can bring your tithe and your offering uh, to the church. Uh, if you live here locally, you can drop it off in our mailbox. It will be marked, your tithes and offering, your gifts will be secure. Uh, the third way that you can give, you can just mail uh, your gifts to the church. Uh, the church is located at 509 Lakey Street in Denton, Texas, 76205. Again, we thank you and we bless God's name for you and all the gifts that you are going uh, to bring. And so let me just say a word of blessing over this offering. Lord, all of those who have uh, made up in their hearts and minds to uh, be faithful and obedient to your word, O oh God, to respond to you in worship and acts of giving. Lord, we ask that you would bless them. We ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver. And we realize, O oh God, that in uncertain times like these, a lot of us, many of us have uh, a desire in our hearts to give, but we just don't have the money right now. Father, I'm going to lift them up right now and ask that you would uh, bless them, O oh God, that you would take that nothing and multiply it into something. Lord, bless every member, O oh God, of St. Emmanuel, all of those who are connected to us, O oh God. And Lord, we ask right now that you would hold us in times like these. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we ask it all. Amen. But God is, God is so taste it, taste it, try it now. Yeah, she will never taste and see. Oh, taste and see. Try him now. He will never. You got it.